Coming up, Moby to the rescue. This Newfoundland is a lifeguard. Staying alert when his narcoleptic owner can't. And frantic scratching from this Springer Spaniel means a drug bust. Moby, a Newfoundland land seer, is one of the most important crew members on Rapture Marine Expeditions. He has a nose for danger, and his job is a matter of life and death. Moby stands by to rescue kids who get into trouble. Many of these kids have never been in the open sea. The strong currents often take them by surprise. Good job, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. Rapture Marine Expeditions is like a summer camp. Kids go out for four to seven days to learn about the ocean environment. But most of all, they go to have fun in the water. Scott McClung is the director of Rapture Marine Expeditions. With up to 150 kids on board at a time, he needs a crew trained for any type of emergency. Moby fits right in. On the ship we have our lifeguards and our emergency medical technicians and our firefighters and Moby rounds out that, that crew really well by performing tasks that humans can't. Whether it's a fire drill, whether it's a, a, a water rescue drill or whether it's a, a hike or search and rescue on land. With his keen sense of smell and his hearing and his sixth sense, he just uh, innately knows exactly what he's supposed to do and when he's supposed to do it. The Newfoundland is named for the Canadian Atlantic province, where it was a necessary crew member on every fishing boat. Large enough to pull in a drowning man or to break the ice as he dove into the frigid northern ocean, the Newfoundland hauled nets and retrieved people and objects that fell overboard. The kids are in the water for three hours in the morning and for another three hours in the afternoon. Moby is always on guard. He takes his job seriously. He takes very, very, very little direction. With a good working dog, uh, that's really the way it should be. You're relying on their senses. And so we really try to trust Moby um, for, what he's, uh, for what he's trying to do. The breed developed webbed feet and a heavy oily coat as an adaptation to the extreme conditions of the Canadian maritime climate. Moby's double coat keeps him from getting wet to the skin, while his powerful hindquarters, deep broad chest and large lung capacity allow him to swim great distances and fight ocean currents. A kid with a cramp might be embarrassed and tried to hide it, but no one can hide anything from Moby. He picks up on subtle clues in body language, and Scott believes that Moby can also smell chemical changes in the breath produced by stress. So he goes from one person to another very quickly, just a rapid smell of their breath, and he sees if he can sense any anxiety coming from their breath. Any kid in trouble is instructed to grab onto Moby. But naturally, as soon as he feels pull on his vest, or even if he's not wearing the vest, if he feels pull on his fur, he immediately pulls somebody back to the boat. Moby is three and a half years old. Newfoundland's mature pretty late, and Moby, he's probably about like a 14-year-old boy. And um, sometimes you see the, the hints of him being a real noble, mature Newfoundland with his chest out, but then the next minute you'll see him being real squirrely and playing around with the kids. And sometimes when kids are coming up the ladder, he's right in their face with his big drool, and so he'll shake and that drool will fly all over. And if it lands on girls, um, especially teenage girls, they don't really like it too much. <laughs> Um, the boys tend to like it. Uh, I thought the drill was pretty cool. It's all over the place and stuff. Moby isn't just a lifeguard. He helps on nature hikes, too. On a couple of hikes, he's out in front like this, and when we get up on the narrow trails, he's actually uh, 
uh, stopped and, uh, and backed me up away from a couple of rattlesnakes that were coiling right in front of us before. So he has a keen sense for, for wildlife and rattlesnakes we found. So he's kind of saved me a couple times probably from a couple snake bites. Each day begins with the usual three hour swim in the open sea. Newfoundland dogs don't always understand water and play. His first instinct when he was just a couple months old even was to just to go in and pull everybody out of the water. But now he's realizing that people can be in the water, they can have fun. But in the open sea, the icy water and strong currents can quickly turn fun to danger. Moby alerts the moment he senses trouble. For Moby, even a training rescue mission like this one is real. Hey, Moby. Hey, Moby, give me a kiss. Oh, he's dark. Moby's an extremely valuable member on the boat. The whole crew basically considers him a very, very valuable asset to them because they really respect his senses. They really respect how hard he works and how serious he takes his job. It's pretty cool to um, see like a dog be able to do the same stuff as humans can do. And it may be possibly even better than some humans. Moby for me is absolutely part of my family and he is uh, absolutely part of my crew. Just being around Moby instantly takes your stress level down, and uh, I don't know what we would do without Moby at home and on the boat. He's just uh, uh, absolutely incredible. Toronto's busy crisscrossing traffic can be daunting for pedestrians. But for Joan Bennett, the challenge is even greater. Every day, Joan ties herself to her standard poodle Morgan. Joan has narcolepsy. She can fall asleep at any time. Morgan has to be ready to take over. Narcolepsy is a severe sleep disorder. Joan's knees can give out. She can hallucinate or even go into temporary sleep paralysis. If Morgan weren't paying attention at all times, Joan could sleepwalk through a busy intersection and get hit by a car. Before she got Morgan, Joan's life was extremely difficult. I be staggering between lamppost and lamppost, people would think I was drunk and they wouldn't know whether to come and help me or keep away. Ladies, old ladies aren't supposed to be drunk. So it was hard. And also, I've fallen down and the first thing people do, call 911. Um, there's no need, I'm, I'm perfectly all right. I just need a few minutes. Morgan keeps Joan company while she gardens. Leslie Webster from Key Companion Service Dogs visits periodically. 
Morgan is thought to be the only narcolepsy assist dog in the world. Dogs are quite intuitive. Um, they pick up on things that we often aren't even aware that they're picking up on. They're really good readers of body language, smell, um, eyes, pupils, things like that. But quite often, um, as in Morgan's case, the dog will actually go beyond the training and he'll start to pick up, especially when he has a good bond with the person, he'll start to pick up on things um, just on his own. Uh, Morgan was trained to um, recognize certain things that Joan does. Her trainer noticed that she put her arm up or out when she was losing her balance. So when Joan starts to stagger or move differently, uh, one of the first things that Morgan was taught to do was to go and find a chair. Morgan is Joan's link to independence. With him around, she can go out on her own. Morgan is always on call. Do you want an ice cream cone? Joan is having an episode. Morgan puts his training into practice. Morgan, find a seat. Find a seat. Okay, find a seat. She rewards him with a treat and suddenly falls asleep. Joan isn't hurt. Morgan is trained to stand guard when Joan has an episode. Unless she's in danger, he waits for her to wake up. Morgan, come here. Morgan, come. Joan falls asleep a half dozen times a day. After a rest, she continues her errands. Hello, Joan. How are you? Good to oh. see you. <laughs> it's so wonderful to see Morgan literally push her into a safety zone with all the people around them. He's right there. And that gives her security. She's a happier person because she can socialize. And it's just, it's just been a wonderful thing for her. Her whole life has opened up because she has that dog. Joan had a successful career as a math teacher and raised two children while living with the challenges of narcolepsy since she was a teenager. That was hard. I enjoyed teaching. I was head of the math department at an inner city school. Great kids and a super job for somebody like me because you need a bunch of teenagers, believe me, to stay awake. Now, meetings were horror stories. Morgan makes Joan feel secure in public and at home. I am well aware I have no business using the stove, but I want some stew. Start browning meat. The next thing I'm aware of, my friend here is barking and barking and seems to be getting louder. And I'm right here, my head in the pillow. He then started hitting me with his paw. I was getting kind of angry about this. And then he hit me on, in the face. That woke me up thoroughly. And when I opened my eyes, the house was black with smoke. You could hardly breathe. Here's the poor dog, did everything he could. So we got to the front door, opened the door. This guy saved my life. And I haven't used the stove since. And if somebody is here with me, it isn't safe. Morgan's a purebred standard poodle. We like to use uh, the standard poodles partly because they are so intelligent and quite intuitive. They seem to uh, pick up on things much quicker than a lot of other breeds. And also it's kind of nice because they're hypoallergenic. They don't shed and um, people aren't allergic to them. So they're quite acceptable in public, in schools, places like that. I didn't want a poodle. Oh, it hurts. I wanted a lab. And I didn't like the name Morgan either. I mean, really. It didn't, and there was a long pause in the conversation. And the reply was, you don't have to have them trimmed like a poodle. <laughs> 
without realizing it. <laughs> now I wouldn't have anything but. Sometimes I'm perfectly all right. That's hard to understand. But but um, but when I'm not, he's there. When he's out of his working harness, Morgan unwinds with Joan's son-in-law and daughter. He still needs some time to play and be a dog. So I think our, our job in his life is to, is to socialize him and take him for walks and give him treats. Joan has had Morgan for 12 months. He's made a world of difference in her life. We're proud of him. We're proud of you, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's got to get in on the action. He's got to get in on the action. Yes, we're proud of you, too. Joan says she used to try to fade into the background. Not anymore, so I, uh, I'm working on being an outrageous old broad. So with Morgan, we're getting closer to our goal. <laughs> A 14-month-old Springer Spaniel is no ordinary dog. And this is no ordinary toy. It's filled with a chemically created scent of cocaine. Good boy. Come on in. Just start him off. Tony Hornsby and Peter Fletcher of Lacatamia International train dogs for jobs around the world. Reverse your search. For the last four months, they've been training Barney to detect illegal drugs. Good boy. If he passes his final exam, he'll start a new life in Tanzania as an airport drug buster. Barney has been trained to actively alert to the scent of cocaine, heroin, LSD, and marijuana. He's got to show it by scratch indication, vigorously show it. He mustn't just whimper or sit. He's got to actively show the point where there are drugs. Barney doesn't realize he's looking for drugs. We train a dog like Barney by channeling in all of his energies into a big game. And the game consists of a toy being hidden, which we call a wrap, and he finds this oh, good wrap. Boy. Good boy. Good As the training boy. progresses, in the wrap, we insert pseudo drugs. This is either the heroin, cocaine, or marijuana, or whatever we're working with. So the dog in finding the wrap or toy also is finding, unbeknownst to himself, drugs. The artificial substances are completely safe. Barney never comes into contact with real drugs. After Barney made the link between the scent of drugs and this toy, he learned to seek the scent without seeing the toy. Whenever Barney alerts to the scent, he gets the toy as a reward. Peter pulls it out of his back pocket. Good boy. On the job, the toy will be used to distract Barney the moment he alerts, since even sniffing real drugs could be fatal. Tomorrow, Barney has his final exam in this pub. If he succeeds, he'll be off to Tanzania. If he fails, Tony will have to find him a new home, which might be difficult given his past. Barney is a chewer. His previous owners gave him up because he had chewed up everything from the sofa to the TV remote control. Barney was left alone all day in a small home and was just trying to entertain himself. Springer Spaniels are known for their unlimited stamina. They thrive on physical activity and need constant physical and mental stimulation. And it's only through channeling this enthusiasm into the work can they live a normal life. Otherwise, they end up in trouble. Barney is ultra curious, very, very willful, is left to his own devices, a perfect dog for drug work. Good boy. At the pub tomorrow, Barney will have to sniff out a combination of narcotics in two different locations. But he has time to cram in one last practice session. 
We chose the location for the test as a pub for the simple reason that the temptations that the dog would encounter in his operational career would be there. Good boy, good boy, boy. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Barney good boy. has never had to find good more boy. than one drug at a time, and he's never searched an indoor location before. Good boy. This pub is full of brand new distractions. The smells of food, beer, and cigarettes, and the noise from the jukebox and arcade games. Barney waits outside the pub while another trainer hides the drugs. It's test time for Barney. Barney aced the first part. The drugs were hidden at floor level. This time, they'll be hidden higher. Barney has proven himself ready for work. Well done. Well done, Pete. Let's book this ticket for Tanzania. Tony and Peter will travel to Tanzania with Barney to help him adjust to the heat, the new scents, and his new handler. I'm not surprised that Barney passed the test. Is a star pupil in my eyes. If I had to pick an ideal dog for drug work, this would be the dog. Nothing phases him. Very, very good dog.